Hello world, happy Pi Day. Let's write some code to calculate Pi. The first method uses something called the Gauss Legendre method, which was discovered by two mathematicians back in 1799 and 1815. Way before computers or even calculators existed, you'd need to be a dedicated person to hand calculate Pi. It's a good algorithm though, it doesn't need to store the final value of pi and can just keep on spitting out digits one by one. Pi is a value with an infinite number of decimal places. This is a problem in computing where floating point values have a specific maximum and minimum size and a set amount of precision. I'm sure if I ran this though, with too many iterations, it would overflow whatever mystical data type Python uses for its numbers. The impenetrable code in the middle makes use of Python's ability to do something called packing. Let's look at a different way to calculate pi that involves barely any maths. In fact, this is a method you can do yourself if you're patient enough. Draw a square. Inside the square, draw an arc. Now randomly plot points inside the square. You do need to plot quite a lot of points, maybe at least 10,000, or 100,000, maybe a million. Now simply count how many points were inside the arc and how many weren't. If you then divide the first number by the second and multiply the answer by 4, this will give you an approximation of pi. Now because I don't have the patience to do this, let's write a computer program instead. This kind of statistical technique is known as a Monte Carlo method and involves random sampling of data to approximate a solution that otherwise might be difficult or impossible to model mathematically. The Cycles render in Blender uses it to generate images and quite a lot of the financial world makes use of these techniques too. And if you want another approximation of pi, 22 divided by 7, it's close enough. Or you could just round it down to 3. But if you say that to mathematicians, they get all irrational. <laughs> 